Hey, good afternoon. Age 22. Design analysis. In this chapter, we'll, for, we'll take a further look at the Autodesk Revit conceptual design tools and how you can leverage them for sustainable design analysis. We'll also explore a few other tools, some of which use building information modeling geometry to support design analysis. Most building designs start with some simple concepts or forms. Will the building be tall or long, curved or rectilinear? How will those shapes affect sustainable design concepts like solar gain, daylighting, and energy consumption? To perform these kinds of analysis and explore the initial ideas for building form and Revit, we use masses. In the previous chapter, we discussed how to create several kinds of massing. In this chapter, we'll explore a different type of mass called the conceptual mass and use that to generate sustainable design analysis. In this chapter, you'll learn to embrace energy analysis concept. Analyze your model for energy performance. Analyze your model for daylighting performance. Analyzing for sustainability. Environmentally thoughtful design strategies have been around for millennia. But the practice of sustainable design with quantifiable metrics has seen substantial growth in the past decade. Sustainable design practices can help address many issues. Among them, energy use, access to natural daylight, human health and productivity, and resource conservation. One of the principal goals of sustainable design is to reduce the building's overall resource use. This can be measured in the building's carbon footprint, www.architecture2030.org, or the net amount of carbon dioxide emitted by a building through its energy use. Before we delve into discussing any specific workflows involving BIM and sustainable design analysis, it's important to recognize that many concepts are both interdependent and cute. The more sustainable methods you can incorporate into a project, the greener the project becomes. Take the example of building orientation, glazing, and daylighting. Designing your building in the optimal orientation, using the right glass in the correct amount and location, and integrating sun shading into the project to optimize the use of natural light, all build on each other. Using these three strategies together makes a building operate more efficiently, while allowing occupants access to plenty of natural light. The amount of usable daylight you might capture will greatly reduce, will be greatly reduced with the application of highly reflective glass or if the building's orientation is inappropriate for the geography. The appropriateness and benefits of any of these individual strategies depends on the building type and climate. Revit software has similar characteristics because it is a parametric modeler, all the parts are interrelated. Understanding and capitalizing on these relationships typically takes numerous iterations that span multiple projects. Optimizing the integrated strategies and technology for high-performance design requires an understanding of how they work together to deliver the best potential. That is where Revit comes in. Allowing the ability to iterate and analyze faster than in a more traditional process. The process is built on the following methodology for reducing the energy consumption of buildings. Understanding climate. Reducing loads, use free energy, use efficient systems. Understanding energy modeling. Understanding a building's energy needs is paramount to help the project become more sustainable in reducing costs throughout the building life cycle. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, uh, EIA.do.gov, as of March 2015, buildings in the United States amount for 30% of the world's energy consumption and 60% of the world's electricity use, making the United States the primary consumer of energy in the world. Within the United States, buildings consume nearly half, or 47%, of all energy produced in the United States, responsible for more than 44% of carbon dioxide emissions in the nation per year. Exceeding emissions in the transportation sector, 34%, and industry sector, 21%. See architecture 2030org about. Architecture 2030 seeks to achieve a dramatic reduction in energy consumption and CO2 emissions by changing the way that buildings and communities are planned, designed, and built. The Architecture 2030 Challenge was established in recognition of the significant role that buildings play in the climate change crisis. Architecture 2030 established the 2030 Challenge asking the global AEC community to adopt a series of CO2 emissions reduction targets and sustainable building design strategies to ensure that all new buildings, developments, and renovations are carbon neutral by 2030. <laughs> Excuse me. It is important to distinguish carbon neutral from net zero energy buildings.
Net zero buildings must produce as much energy on site as the building consumes. In contrast, carbon neutral buildings do not use fossil fuels or emit greenhouse gases. While this may sound impossible, there are intelligent and realistic design options to achieve sustainability targets, including optimizing building orientation, passive heating and cooling, and daylighting. These low-cost, no-cost methods, in combination with energy-efficient technologies such as high-efficiency mechanical equipment on-site renewable energy generation and off-site renewable energy or uh, credits can contribute to carbon neutrality goals. The design of new buildings and major renovations are targeted to meet a fossil fuel and energy performance standard of 70% below the regional average for the building type derived from Commercial Building Energy Consumption Survey, CDECS. The the fossil fuel reduction standard is then increased to 80% in 2020, 90% in 2025, an ultimate target of carbon neutral buildings by 2030. The 2030 challenge has been embraced by the AIA in the form of the AIA 2030 commitment global architecture firms, nearly 400 have signed on to the commitment. A cornerstone of the commitment is energy modeling, which the AIA describes as playing a critical role in improving building design and building performance, as stated in the AIA 2014 progress report. Leading architecture firms recognize that in designing projects that meet the 2030 targets, they are providing their clients with the highest quality top performing buildings at minimal or zero additional cost. Using Revit for energy simulations. Energy simulation is key to meeting the 2030 challenge in critical sustainability building design. Historically, one of the biggest barriers to successful discovery and implementation of sustainable design measures for buildings is the difficulty of getting informative energy simulation results early in the design process quickly and cheaply. A common approach to improving models for energy simulation has been to increase the precision of model inputs, requiring considerable effort and time. Even after significant effort, the results are often still inaccurate when compared to real-world buildings because errors due to uncertainties and operational variations are still present. Revit now addresses these challenges with rapid energy simulation leveraging Energy Plus, DO2, Energy Analysis Engines with results presented in Autodesk Insight, insight360.autodesk.com. The energy needs of a building depend on a number of issues that are not simply related to leaving the lights on in a room that you are no longer using, turning down the heat, or increasing the air conditioning. Many of the components and systems within the building affect its energy for use. For instance, if you increase the size of the windows on the south facade, you allow in more natural light and lower your need for electric lighting. However, without proper sun shading, you are also letting in additional solar heat gain. So, these larger windows are increasing your need for air conditioning and potentially creating the energy savings from reduced lighting. In exploring the use of energy in a building, you must consider all energy-related issues, which is a good reason to use energy simulation tools. Those computer-based models use climate data coupled with building loads, such as the following. The heating, ventilation, air conditioning, HVAC system, solar heat gain, the number of occupants and, the occupants and their activity levels the number of occupants and their activity levels, sun shading, devices, daylighting, dimming, lighting levels. Two times. The energy model combines these factors to predict the building's energy demands to help size the building's HVAC system. It also combines the parameters of other components properly, so you are not using a system larger than what you need, and you can understand the impact of your design on the environment. By keeping the energy model updated with the current design, you can begin to grasp how building envelopes with the locations, building orientation, and other parameters affect energy demands. There are four ways you can use Revit architecture software for energy analysis. Conceptual massing, schematic facade design, detailed modeling, or exporting to other applications. Let's explore each of these workflows in a bit more detail. Conceptual massing analysis. Conceptual massing, or analysis, or modeling, allows you to analyze the energy consumption of the model directly within Revit. Using this workflow, you can analyze mass forms directly in the model and view energy simulation results within Insight. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash insight.autodesk.com. This is ideal for the following use cases. Early targeting and assessing feasibility, including feasibility of client goals and expectations. Guiding early-stage architectural design decisions such as geometry, orientation, window tool 
Michelle? Oh. Shading and materials to reduce energy consumption. Meaning the requirements of the AIA 2030 Design Data Exchange, DDX, submittal, which is one of the steps to meet the 2030 challenge. Exporting models to GBXML, DO2, or Energy Plus formats for additional analysis. Schematic facade design. By using a simple massing model, you can quickly apply curtain wall systems to maze fences using the curtain system tool on a model by face panel of the massing and site tab. This workflow works best when massing objects rather than more refined model data as it allows quick iterations of the building facade. This workflow is valuable in any of the previously mentioned cases, but would also include the following and subsequent and all the exhibits that I have exhibited to you over this medium to date, despite my behavior. This workflow is valuable in any of the previously mentioned cases, but will also include the following. Model content has more accurate settings for walls and exterior shading. It allows you to specify space and material thermal properties, providing additional detail and analysis. Detailed models. A detailed Revit model refers to the type of model you would, would have closer to the end of the construction documentation process. These models are richer in specific materiality. Some of them are just as superficial or directly proportional to their size. And other features. Let's not lose sight of that fact that would change energy consumption. They also allow for the isolation of elements that are used in the creation of the energy model and resolution of missing elements or large gaps in the design, for instance. If a section of the building has unresolved design elements, you can still create a meaningful analysis by isolating that portion of the building. The benefits, the benefits of this workflow include listed earlier and the specification of space and material thermal properties. Uh, export. This workflow requires exporting a more detailed model to another application using the GBXML format, a standardized XML schema used for singular design analysis. Additional export options include IMP and IDF for DO2 and Energy Plus. Numerous experiments with energy analysis throughout all the stages of model development reveal consistency and energy simulation results. Note that in the following figure, the energy cost ranges have little variation from conceptual mass to more detailed models. Our point is that massing models with insights fast, simple, valuable, and worth exploring early in the building design to guide design decisions with continuous optimization as design progresses. And there's a deviation of, uh, of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1 uh, tenths of a degree in these particular models. The book that is shows you it's a fraction of a percentage point. Regardless of your choice of analysis workflows, the first step, the first step is to have accurate location and true north settings for your model. Without them, it is impossible to understand the localized energy uh, performance. Once you have those established, you can approach energy analysis with confidence. Let's take a look at the process for generating a conceptual energy analysis. Using the conceptual energy analysis tool, the Conceptual Energy Analysis CEA tool has been part of the Revit software since 2009. This tool created a link to the online analysis service known as Autodesk Green Building Studio web service. These tools have since evolved into Autodesk Insight, which leverages Do2, because this sure isn't all about me, and Energy Plus simulation engines. Millions of parametric simulations with results presented in interactive dashboards. The energy analysis results are generated quickly and provide the following. Estimate of energy use intensity, EUI, in KBTU per SF per year or kilowatt hours per square meter per year. Energy operational cost estimate. Benchmarking against Architecture 2030 and ASHRAE 90.1. Interactive key performance indicators or building factors rank ordered by their relative influence on energy use and costs. Ability to manipulate key performance factors and compare design options to drive towards desired energy outcomes. Ability to report directly into the architecture 2030 DDX directly from Insight, www.aia.org, pages 5041-AIA-2030-design-data-data-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-exchange-dda-
by conceptual mass into a template project to run a series of energy analysis. There are five basic tools for configuration analysis and comparison of results on the analysis tab of the ribbon for both building elements and masses. Assessing Insight. Assessing Revit's energy tool, Insight, is available as a subscription benefit of Revit and the AEC collection. You will need an, a, an Autodesk login ID, A360 account, to access Insight. You can check to see whether you have an account already or create one at http autodesk360.com. A360. Setting up an energy analysis. Before you can run an analysis for either building elements or massing, you need to do a bit of configuration to give your analysis engine some parameters. <clears throat> and the only parameter I have is that uh, my children are will get the therapy they require. What else? You're going to use a building that is through schematic design. The buildings is a university foundation building that serves as an office space. You can download the file from the book's companion website, www.cybex.com, go Mastering Revit 2018. The model is C22 analysis start, and if that doesn't happen, whoever wants me to work for them can go fuck themselves. My kids come first as my parameter. Once the file is open, analyze that energy level. Once the file is open, activate the full 3D view. Spin the model around a bit and get orientated so that you're familiar with the design. The building looks like figure 22. That's fine. To begin the configuration of the energy analysis settings, follow these steps. Activate the default 3D view and in the view control bar, set visual style to shaded, turn shadows on. All right. Dad needs a break. Now, we're going to talk about MEP systems. It's important. It's a highly developed aspect of this. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things. Uh, we're going to talk about Comscope. We're going to talk about Chrome. We're going to talk about 66 blocks. We're going to talk about concierge consent, uh, command centers. We're going to talk about what a concierge actually is. We're going to talk about who the keeper of the candles just so happens to be. The keeper of the candles. A product never looks up.